Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and Rune Factory 5 has gotten yet another trailer. And although it was shown off in the Nintendo Direct Mini that happened recently, it was only in the Japanese version, so we haven't actually gotten this specific trailer in English. But that's completely okay, because there's still a ton of stuff to see. Let's take a look at this together. So first things first, I want to talk about the characters real quick. There were a few characters shown off in this trailer, some we've already seen before, and some brand new. So let's give them all a proper introduction, starting with a few marriage candidates. First up is Priscilla. She's going to be the sweet, cheerful, but somewhat clumsy girl, and since we've seen her in the last trailer, I've already seen quite a bit of love for her online. So I'm glad everyone likes her already. She's very cute, and I love her pink hair. Anyway, next is Scarlet. We've also seen her before as well. She's a half-elf who will be a part of the Peacekeeping Rangers, as the last trailer put it. By the way, we found out because of this new trailer that the name of the Rangers group will be Seed, which is really fitting for a farmer. Anyway, Scarlet is a very by-the-books type of person, and she's very adamant about following the rules. I really like Scarlet's designs. I cannot wait to meet her in person. She looks really cool to me. Okay, now on to the two bachelors. First, there's Martin, an apprentice blacksmith who's a little on the quiet side. Although he can be a little blunt from time to time, he's often misunderstood because of it. He really reminds me of Grey from Friends of Mineral Town, especially because of the whole blacksmith thing he's got going on. He looks cool though. However, next up is someone who's already gotten extremely popular, and that is Reinhardt. Reinhardt is a knight who has sworn allegiance to the Norad Kingdom. Although he's dutiful, rational, and intelligent, he never tries to force others to conform to his way of thinking, which earns him their trust and respect in the end. Yeah, so from what I've seen in the comments of my last video on Rune Factory 5, you guys really like Reinhardt. He's becoming the fan-favorite character of this game already. And I mean, it's no question why, he looks really, really cool. He's another one I also really can't wait to meet in-game. Those are the four marriage candidates we really know about so far, but there were some townspeople showing off as well. We got good looks at Livia, another member of Seed, Gondage, who is the founder of Seed, he looks very official, by the way, and Oswald, who is the leader of a group of thieves. I really can't wait to see the other characters interact with Oswald, since the characters we know about so far are mostly peacekeeping rangers. It'll be interesting to see if and how they clash when they come face to face with the leader of a thieves group. Other than everyone here though, we also got very brief looks at a few other characters from the trailer. They're on screen now, very very brief looks when no information has really been thrown out about them. I must say though, they all do look really interesting. However, enough about the characters for now, let's take a look at some of the gameplay they showed off because I was super interested in what I saw. First, we got a real good look at some of the combat in the game. The combat looks super cool, super flashy, it really does remind me of how flashy Ties of Destiny was, but with the control of Rune Factory 4, it looks like. This combat is going to be super smooth and satisfying, I can already tell. It looks really, really good. I'm so excited. This was honestly my favorite part of the trailer, just getting to see all the combat. And some of the different weapons were also shown off as well. We got to see the one-handed sword, the dual blades, the great sword, and even a magic rod. The main character used it to shoot fire at a monster. I was wondering if the rods were going to come back or not, and I'm glad to see that they're here. But speaking of, the main character also threw this magic at a monster or something, and it said success over its head, and then it looked like the monster was trapped? What is this? Sh should I know what this is? Because I'm drawing a blank. This I'm going to be honest, this isn't looking familiar to me. Maybe I'm just crazy, but it's not ringing a bell right now. Anyway, all the different fighting styles are here, and because the combat is more flashy, it looks like they've all been overhauled with brand new combos, which is going to be really, really fun. That's what the combat looks like in this game. It just it looks fun. I can't wait to get into the game and actually go fight monsters. Now, we also got to look at one of the boss battles as well. It took place in what looks like a volcano, maybe even the volcano whale we saw in the teaser trailer way back. But this battle is with a giant, very scary looking serpent that was on fire and throwing fireballs at you. Now that Rune Factory is back in a 3D space, I think some of these boss battles are going to get a lot more intense and dynamic. There were a ton of amazing boss fights in 4. Could you imagine some of those scaled up and put into a 3D space? Some of those would look absolutely stunning. I just have a lot of hope for this game, you know? And from the look of these trailers, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed at all. Oh yeah, I don't know if it's after this serpent fight or not, but this dragon also appeared in the same spot, and it looks pretty cool too. Although it does look a bit small. I don't know, maybe it's just a small dragon, I don't know. It did look a bit small to me though. 
Anyway, one last thing relating to the combat here is the dungeons. The dungeons have always been a really good part of Rune Factory, especially in 4, and although we really didn't get a good look at the dungeons, there was this short clip of the main character avoiding a boulder coming down a hallway. It's not much, but I thought I'd point this out because it it's something, at least. You know, and kind of makes me excited to see how they've expanded upon dungeon puzzles since Rune Factory 4. This clip just got me thinking about that. I really do hope they expand the puzzles a lot. Speaking of being given quick looks though, check this shot out. It's the fox, or the kitsune, from the original teaser trailer for Rune Factory 5. We only got a very short look at it, but it's really pretty. And I can't wait to find out what its role is in the story and why it was teased along with the other three monsters. Does it actually have a really big role in the story? Is it a character like a lot of people are speculating? I really wonder. I'm interested to find out. It's a mystery, it's all super exciting. However, if you aren't too excited yet, Allow me to show you this. Check out the premium box edition of Rune Factory 5. Remind you of anything? Because it sure reminds me of the archival edition of Rune Factory 4 Special. We're getting another limited edition box, and it looks like it'll be the same as what Rune Factory 4 Special got. It'll come with a copy of Rune Factory 5, a beautiful art book, the game's soundtrack, and the box itself, which has some beautiful artwork on it, just like the archival edition had. But wait! Remember how Rune Factory 4 Special also came with DLC that was included in the box? Well, this game does too, but it's not a swimsuit DLC this time around, it's clothing for the main characters. But not just any clothing, it's the outfits of the marriage candidates from Rune Factory 4. Now this, this is really cool. If you've ever wanted your character to dress up as any of your favorite Rune Factory 4 characters, you can in Rune Factory 5. This is honestly just the coolest. I love stuff like this. Getting to see the Rune Factory 4 outfits, but in a better quality thanks to the improved visuals of 5 is amazing. This got me thinking too, along with the outfits, I really hope they have some type of cameos as well, like how Raven showed up in Rune Factory 4. I love stuff like that. Getting to see the Rune Factory 4 outfits in 5, that's a really cool reference in itself. These outfits are awesome, and so is the premium box. Since we did get the Archival Edition for 4 Special in the past, here in the West, I'm positive we'll also be getting this at some point, so keep your eyes peeled for this one. Because remember, this was announced for Japan, not for North America yet. But I have a lot of- I'm almost certain we'll be getting it, I have a lot of hope. We did get the Archival Edition after all. Anyway, last but certainly not least, we may not have a concrete release date for the game here in North America, but Japan did get one which usually lets us know when to expect the game over here in the West. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Anyway, the game will be releasing in Japan on May 20th, 2021. Not too much longer for Japan, honestly. They don't have much of a wait left, which hopefully means that our turn is just around the corner. Because honestly, seeing more of the combat, the characters, I mean, just learning more in general is getting me so unbelievably hyped. I mean, I know that's what the trailers are supposed to do. It, it worked. I'm hyped. I'm waiting. The problem is, I don't want to wait anymore. This is going to be so much fun. I am so excited. But, anyway, that's going to be all from me today. Did I miss anything from the trailer? Let me know if I did, and let me know what you think about everything we've seen here today. Especially your thoughts on the premium box. Because I may already own the Archival Edition, but let me tell you something. This premium box is going to look real nice next to that one. I'm definitely going to be jumping on this when I get the chance. Anyway, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. All links are down in the description along with the names of my wonderful, amazing patrons. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.